Hi everyone, welcome to my video on GCSE Maths and we're going to look at transformations of graphs which one of my subscribers has uh, asked for so I try to please, I will give that to you. Okay, now, the confusing thing about transformations of graphs is that you may not be told the formula of the graph that you're talking about. Here is a graph of y equals x squared. Here is a graph of maybe y equals 2x plus 3. Okay, here is a graph of y equals something to do with x cubed. Okay, now, your examiner doesn't have to tell you what the graph is like. The graph could be some random thing, and it might just say y equals f of x. All this means is something to do with x, okay? It could be x squared, it could be 2x add 3, it could be something to do with x cubed. f of x should not be something that you think, I don't know what to do here. It just means anything to do with x, okay? Something to do with x. The reason we use the letter f is, actually, it's called function of x, okay? That's just a, a posh way, posh maths way to say something to do with x. Could be x squared, could be 91 x cubed over 112 x to the power of 54, Okay, whatever you can think of to do with x, y plus sine x plus 7x squared, whatever. Okay, the examiner doesn't want to complicate you by telling you exactly what it is because these rules you work for any f of x. Okay, so for any f of x, these rules are going to work. Now, what you do have to know at A level that you don't really have to know so much at GCSE is what happens when you change this f of x. What happens is you can change x inside here, so you could say x add 1. That means that in your equation you have to change x there as well. So here your equation is x squared, you have to change x to x plus 1. Okay. If you have f of x, 2f of x plus 3, and your equation was x squared, okay, think about f of x as your equation. You do 2 times your equation, 2 times x squared, and then add on the 3. So that is the basics of what we do when we change f of x. Now, if we're sketching graphs, and we already know what the graph of f of x is, equals x squared looks like, we can actually cheat and find out what this graph is without starting from scratch. Now, I've not taught you yet, but I know that this is going to be um, moving it to the left by 1. Okay, And that is a new sketch of x plus 1 squared. So I'm going to show you how we can relate these to the graphs and hopefully um, you can learn all the rules, okay? So, transformations. And we're going to look at the rules. So you do want to make a note of these if you've not already got them in your revision notes. Remember, this is any f of x. I split this up into two different things. Okay, we can do stuff inside 2x, okay, or we can do things outside, so we keep f of x like this, and we might want to do something here, or something here, okay, that's outside, and that means you're doing it 2y. Okay. Now, when you're doing it to x, x is a horizontal axis, so it's going to do something in the horizontal direction. When you're doing it to y, vertical direction. Okay. So you're starting with f of x. 
if you do f of x plus a number, okay, or f of x plus a number outside, these are going to have two different effects. We'll do the easier one first. The easier one is to y. Okay. Now this is a positive direction going up. All you're going to do, A is going to be a number, you're going to move up by A. If it is a negative, okay, if A is a negative, you're going to move down. Right. The other one, when we do it to X, we always do the opposite. So, always opposite. We've said which direction we're going in. This time, right is positive, but we do the opposite because it's inside to x, so we move um, backwards by a. If a was negative, you'd end up actually moving forwards. Okay, I will show you actual questions of these so you can understand what's going on. The other one you need to know is you need to know if you do a number times by f of x outside, y is much easier when it's outside, you're going vertical, and when you multiply your function by something, all your answers get made bigger if b is greater than 1. Okay, so you stretch um, in y direction. I've said a GCSE video, but actually my A-level students struggle on this as well. It's in the first year and second year of A-level maths. Stretching Y direction by scale factor B. If we do it inside the bracket, okay, we're doing it to every single X that we have. We're going that way, and we stretch by the opposite scale factor of 1 over b. So if your b was 2, it's actually going to go half a size. It's going to stretch inwards. Right, the next one you need to know is going to be reflections. Okay, so we can have f of minus x, or we can have minus f of x. Do the easy one first. This one is where people get confused. If we want to reflect it vertically, your mirror has to actually be horizontal. Okay? So we reflect in um, the x-axis. People get confused on this because that's x, and we, we've said we're doing it to y. Okay? So it's the opposite. But I told you why. It's because if you want to reflect vertically, you need a horizontal line. You want to reflect horizontally, you need a vertical line. So the answer to this one is reflect in y-axis. Okay, so there are your three transformations of doing it to x and doing it to y. Be careful on the reflections, they're the opposites. And be careful any time that you're doing it to um, x. You always do the opposite. If you remember those two things, you should be okay with transformations. Let's do some questions. If you want to pause on the questions, these are from GCSE at Excel papers. You can pause, have a go yourself, and then watch me do it, see if you agree. The diagram shows part of a curve with equation y equals f of x. The minimum point is at 2 minus 1, as we can see. Write down the coordinates of the minimum point of a curve with equation y equals f of x plus 2. So I told you they wouldn't tell you what the actual equation was sometimes. That is the equation for f of x. Plus 2 is inside. So it's 2x. Okay. So we do the opposite. So it's telling us to plus 2. That's a movement. Okay. So we would have normally gone plus 2, but no, it's 2x. We do the opposite. So we go 1, 2, and the new point is going to have moved 2 backwards. OK, 
okay? So your x coordinate, actually I've not done that very accurately, have I? Okay, your x coordinate will move 2, so it's going to go to 0, minus 1. Right, 3f of x. This is outside, so it's going to be 2y. So you just do what it says on the tin. You multiply by 3. Okay. Now what actually happens, at A level they have to sketch these. The points where x is 0, where, sorry, where y is 0, not x is 0, um, you're going to still get 0, because 3 times your answer of 0 still gives you 0. Everything else is going to get multiplied by 3. So your y value is going to go to minus 3, and it has the impact of being stretched like that. So this coordinate is just 2 minus 3. If you just do it with the algebra, 3 times your answer. Okay? Your answer is a minus 1. Next one, f of 2x. If we did it on the diagram, like we talked about, it's inside, so it's 2y. No, it's not. It's 2x. Just kidding there. Okay, so it's going to be the opposite. It's a stretch because we're multiplying, and the opposite of times by 2 is divide by 2. Okay, here's your x values. So the 0, the thing at 0 is, that's going to stay the same is here. That's the fixed point. Okay. Everything else is going to get stretched inwards. So this is going to go from 2 uh, minus 1 to 1 minus 1. Everything halves. Okay, and if you did have to draw it, it would be something like that. I know there's a lot of graphs on top of each other. You didn't even have to draw them. I'm trying to give you a visual understanding of what's going on. If you just like the algebra, okay, then just half your x value 1 minus 1. First question done. Part B. Okay, now we're reflecting f of x. Find the equation of a curve following its transformation. Okay, if we reflect in the y-axis, we're actually reflecting horizontally. So we're doing it to x. So it's going to be f of minus x is the answer. Next bit, part C, the curve with the equation y equals f of x has been transformed to give the curve with the equation f of x add 2. Okay, it's outside, so it's 2y, and you can say move up 2, or a nice way to put it, okay, a nice way to put it would be to say, move by the vector 0, 2, which means 0 across and 2 up, okay? So it's up to you how you answer that one. Another question. We've got another curve, y equals f of x. It's not telling us the equation. It's part of the curve. The coordinates of a maximum point are 2, 3. Write down the coordinates of a maximum point of the curve with equation y equals f of x minus 2. I showed you the graphs last time, it got a bit messy. I'll just show you the algebra this time. So it's x minus 2. So we're doing it to x and we're doing it um, the opposite, that means. So our x value, we've got x, y in terms of the algebra. We're going to take the opposite of minusing 2 to this 2 value. So we're actually going to plus 2 on. Okay, because it's the opposite. So what we're going to get is we're going to get 4, 3. Next part, 2 times f of x. It's to y, so you do the same thing. We're doing it to y, and we just times it by 2, 2, 6. Okay, it's much quicker with just the algebra, but I did want you to get the understanding too. Diagram shows a sketch for curve y equals sine x. So it's actually told us what this equation is. Okay, for 0 to 360 degrees, find the exact value of sine 60 equals uh, root 3 over 2. Okay, 
write down the exact value of sine 120, sine 240. Oh, sorry, it's told you the exact value of sine 60. Okay, so 60 here is going to be root 3 over 2 here is your answer. It's saying write down the exact value of sine 120. Now, sine 120, can you see that's 2 times 60 degrees? So it's 2 times what we had here, okay? And we're doing it to x, so what we're going to have is we're going to have, this is actually just your sign graphs, it's not really transformations, okay? 60 here, 60 here, that's going to give you um, the same answer, root 3 over 2. Sine 240, if we think about the graph, what's going on? Sine 240, you're adding on 60 this way, okay, to get to 240. And because of the symmetry of the graph, which I'll try and show you in a second, it's going to be the negative version. Now, what I mean by the symmetry is if we spin this around, okay, we get the same thing. So... This point corresponds to this point, but obviously one's positive and this one's negative. Okay, so it's minus root 3 over 2. Right, so we've got the same graph again, y equals sine x. On the grid below, sketch a graph of 4 sine 2x. So this is your A star question. Okay. 4 sine 2x. You need to know that what you're talking about here is f of x. So you're starting with f of x equals sine x. That's our original graph. We're making it into 4 sine 2x. Let's do one at a time. Let's times the x by 2 to get sine 2x. And then times our answer by 4 to get 4 sine 2x. The 4 part is going to multiply your answer by 4. You're doing it to y because it's outside. So it gets stretched up from 1 to 4 and from minus 1 to minus 4. So the new maximum point is going to be at 4 and the new minimum point will be at minus 4. Now this 2x means that you're halving the x-coordinates. So as well, it's going to get stretched inwards like this. Okay? So it's going to get stretched inwards by a half. So you're going to get two complete graphs in the space that you got one complete graph before. Okay? So let me try that again. On this one, it's a bit like that. Okay? But don't forget we're stretching it up as well. We're doing the two things to it. So your final graph is going to look something like this for two marks. Okay, quite a tricky one. That's y equals 4 sine 2x. So it's a really useful way to sketch complicated graphs by basing it on the original and applying the transformations. That's what they're used for. Okay, the curve with the equation y equals f of x is transformed, translated so that the point at 0, 0 is mapped, that means transformed onto, moved onto the point 4, 0, as we can see here. Find the equation of a translated curve. Okay, well, how have we changed f of x? We've moved it 4 in the x direction. When we do in the x direction, we do the opposite to our f of x equation. So it's f of x minus 4. So the equation is y equals f of x minus 4. Next part, the grid shows the graph of y equals cos x for values of x from 0 to 540. On the grid, sketch a graph of, we're doing two transformations again, 3 
times cos 2x. Okay? Remember what the 3 means? The 3 means that you stretch upwards. So from 1, it's going to go to 3. From minus 1, it's going to go to minus 3. Okay? And the 2x means that we half all the x values. So the 180 is going to go to 90, etc. Okay? This one is going to go halfway. This one halfway. But it's a bit weird with the squares on this one, but there you go. So we're going to do both of these things. Okay? So this point stretched down to here. This one up to here, etc. We are going to get two graphs that's one period that's one repetition of the curve we're going to get two repetitions in that same space so let's go for it okay let's think where it's going to cross it's going to cross at half of that and half of that which is three four four and a half so it's about two something like that okay i'm not a fan of this grid personally but there you go i didn't write the question Right, so that's one repetition. We need to keep carrying on with that same pattern. Okay. Um, so let's just check we're going to right place. Minimum, minimum here at 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. It's going to go to 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4.5. It's going to go to there. The maximum is off the page. Okay. So we just need to carry this pattern on. So one little line down is one and a half. And we need to be careful where it's cutting the graph as well, actually. Okay, one and a half, about halfway between. Three, missed that a bit. You can see it is a tricky one. Pro I probably should have put more points on, to be honest. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Here. Um, one, two, three. Here. Okay. And then it crosses halfway around here and here. Probably put all your points on first to be more accurate. Right. So that's the graph of y equals 3 cos 2x. Next one. Sketch the curve of the equation y equals f of x. Again, we're not told the equation. The minimum point of the curve is at 3 minus 4. Write down the coordinates of the minimum point of the curve with the equation f of x minus 2. So it's 2x, so we do the opposite 2x. So your x value, instead of minusing 2, you're going to add 2. It's going to go to 5 minus 4. Part B, write down the coordinates of the minimum point of the equation. We're doing two steps here. X plus 5 plus 6. So the plus 5 is to X. So we do the opposite to X and we minus 5 to get minus 2. The thing outside is to Y. So we actually do what it says. We plus 6 onto that. So it's minus 2, 2. Okay, next question, the graph of the equation y equals f of x is here. I'm drawing it on again, that's y equals f of x. Graph is, has a translation um, and it gets you to the new graph. So that translation is a movement, so we move it to here. Okay, write down in terms of f the equation of the graph g. So we need to pick a point that's easy to use. Okay which is probably a point that is on um, an intersection of a graph. We need to see how much it's moved to get to a new point. Okay, so that one point to get to there. So let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's moved across five, but remember it's to X. So in the equation, we're actually doing the opposite Okay, we actually minus 5. So it's f of x minus 5. Okay, next part. 
maximum point of minus 4, 3, which we can see here. Write down the coordinates of a maximum point of a graph for a new graph, okay? Well, actually, you could just work that out quite easily. Um, oh, sorry, I thought we were talking about this one. We're talking about a new graph of f of minus x, okay? The new maximum point y equals f of minus x. Now, when it's saying maximum here, uh, it's talking about a local maximum. It's not being very precise in your GCSE paper because you can see that's not a maximum because this is bigger, okay? But in, it is a turning point and it's a maximum in this area. Okay. Anyway, with that said, let's think about the old local minimum is going to be moved up to a new local maximum. So what happens when we do minus x? It's inside, so it's 2x, so we want to flip it that way around, okay? So we want to reflect in that green mirror line. What I was talking about here is if we were reflecting it the other way, okay? So what we want to do is we want to take this line and do that. We want to take this line and we want to reflect it in the mirror line um, of the y-axis, which is x equals 0. So let's see if we can flip um, left to right. Gets reflected, perfect mirror line. OK, a um, bit like that. And you might have already figured out that the new point is going to just be the same, but with this as 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so it's 4, 3 instead. That's all the questions I wanted to show you. It's a difficult topic. To be honest, I think this is the most difficult topic at GCSE level, um, if you actually understand what's going on. If you don't want to fully understand it, but you just want to uh, get the marks, then just do the algebra and think about what we said, how the values are changing. Okay? So, thank you for watching. Um, obviously, if there's any other videos you want, give me a shout. Or if there's any comments you've got on this video, feel free to make them. Okay, I'll listen to what you've got to say. Thanks for watching.